Philippians chapter 4 says there in verse 19, given to us by Paul by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, it says, And my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by his Son Christ Jesus. The New Living Translation said it this way. It says, And this same God who takes care of me will supply all of your needs from his glorious riches which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. I want to talk to you today, and from the very start I want to talk to you about how God will provide for you everything that you will ever need in life to be blessed and prospered. And the way that He supplies it is through His Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. God is the supplier. Jesus is the deliverer. It's kind of like how a supermarket works for us in the natural, isn't it? When you go into the supermarket with your shopping list, I don't think any of us think that some of the things that we're looking for won't be in the supermarket. No, no, we don't. We, we go into the supermarket and we expect everything that we need on that list to be there. And, and you know, most of us, when we go into the supermarket, we even know where a certain thing is. We, we know where the milk is. We know where the butter is and the cheese. And we know where the cornflakes are. And, and we instinctively go to where those things are. And in our hearts, we, we never expect there not to be cornflakes in the supermarket. And if we should happen to go to the supermarket and not there, we're shocked. We're, we're, we're shocked if they're not there. Our supermarket supply chains in this country, they're, they're so excellent that we never expect any of the things that we are looking for not to be there. And we instinctively go and get what we're looking for. And when we do, we, we get it and we go to the Check out and we, we pay for, for what we have, per, pay for the things that we've picked up off our list with, with our currency that we have in our pockets, which enables us to make the transaction. We know that when we, we know that when we go to the supermarket, we get a warm welcome. We'll be welcoming through the door with a smile on their face. And, and when they take their money, they have an even bigger smile on their face. We have such confidence in our supermarket system, don't we? I wonder how it would look if we had the same confidence in our God to provide for us everything that we need through Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 says in the New American Standard Bible, it says, Therefore let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace, so that we may receive mercy and find grace in times of need. It says that we are to come boldly to God, knowing that He will not withhold any good thing from us that He promised us to give. God said that He would take care of all of our needs, and He said that the password is through Jesus Christ. It's kind of like a supermarket slogan, isn't it? It's kind of like God's slogan, whatever you need, you'll find in me through Jesus Christ. But, you know, it's not a supermarket slogan. It is a promise of God and a benefit that we have because we are His children. When you put your faith in Jesus, God actually commissions Himself to save, to protect, to provide for, and to care for you. God always, He always provides for His children. Whatever you need to be able to abound in this life, God has given us the promise that He would provide it for us. But in that knowledge of God's provision, promise, we need to have faith and patience that God is on the job and His ways are not always our ways and His timing certainly is not always our timing. But in the waiting, we need to agree with what Philippians 4 and verse 6 tells us. We need not to be anxious for anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. You know, in the waiting for the manifestation of the promised provision of God, we need to calm down. Amen? We need to calm down. When we're anxious for the things that we've asked God for, and not yet received, then we're displaying a lack of faith in God that He will keep His word. 
Now, I know I might let you down sometimes. I know your husband or your wife, they may let you down sometimes too. Your kids will let you down, even though sometimes we wouldn't like to admit it. Your friends, yeah, yeah, they'll let you down sometimes. There will be promises that, that every one of these different individual people will make to you, and they will, with all good intentions and with the, with the best heart that they may have, will let you down. But we need to get this fixed in our spirits. Even if your husband lets you down, even if your wife lets you down, your kids, your best friend lets you down, even if the supermarket lets you down, God will never let you down. That's something that we can take to the bank. But we need to stop comparing God's promises to our husband's promises. In Hebrews chapter 13, it says there in, in verse 5, it says, God says to us, He said, he, He'll never leave you or He'll never forsake you. Isn't that great news? God said He'll never leave you. There will never be a time in your life that God will leave you. He said He'd never leave you and He would never forsake you. That means God will never let you down. He'll never let me down. Isn't that good news? God's promise is solid. If he promised us it, he will take care of it. We just need to have the faith and the patience to wait for it. Amen? God will never let us down. And here's the thing that we need to realize. If we didn't get it, then it may not have been the best for us. Did you get that today? Because I know every one of us, every one of us have prayed prayers in the past that we haven't seen the manifestation of. And I, I know a lot of us have been confused. You know, I asked God for this and, and God didn't come true for me. God let me down. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. God will never let you down. If you didn't get the thing that you prayed and asked God for, I think you need to realize that God knew it wasn't best for you. How many of us here today with perspective can say that there's things that we really, really wanted in the past that with, with our perspective today, we can say, you know what? Thank God I didn't get it. Thank God I didn't get that house. Because I found out later that it, it had subsidence and the neighbors were shocking. Thank God I didn't get that job. All I really wanted at the time, and I, I really pressed into God at the time, and it was the, my dream job, and it was going to give me enough money to take care of everything that I was ever going to need. And, and I loved the people there, and I knew the, some of them were working there, and it was really close to home, and it was going to be so handy, and it was, the hours were going to be so great. But, but in retrospect, I look back and I say, thank God, it closed down three weeks after I went for an interview. Thank God I didn't get that man. He turned out to be a wife beater. Thank God I didn't get that man because, or woman, because I would have missed you. Thank God I didn't miss you. A great line in the Garth Brooks song years ago was one of God's greatest gifts is unanswered prayers. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 31 says, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after these things the Gentiles seek. It says, For your heavenly Father, your God, your my, my God, your, your God, He says, he, he knows the things that we need. It says, But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And all of these things, all of the, the things that you need, all the things that you're praying for, all the things that you really need in your life, if you seek first the kingdom of God, God says all of these things will be added to you anyway. You see, you, we too often run around like headless chickens chasing after and worrying about things. I need this thing. I have to get that thing. You know, everyone has one of these things. I need to get it too. If that parcel doesn't come today, I don't know what I'm going to do. But we forget that our Heavenly Father, He's not unaware of what you need. You know, God is not up there going around with His Irish independent under His arm and, 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 and forgetting about that you need stuff. He's well aware of what you need. 
And I think sometimes we spend more time trying to inform, poor uninformed God of the things that we need when God knows well what we need. He knows better than we need, and we know what we need. I need this and I need that, but God really knows the this and the that that you need. Relax. God knows better the things that you need than you even know yourself. And here's the thing. God has bound himself to give you the, not the things that you need or not the things that you want. God has bound himself to give you the things that you need. God only said that he would give you the things that you need. He never said he'd give you the things that you, all the things that you want. And aren't we the same as parents? Don't we do the same as parents? Don't we not always give our kids the things that they want? But I tell you, every one of us gives our kids, to the best of our ability, the things that they need. And that's proper parenting. That's responsible parenting. Because there's things that we know that our kids want that we know that they don't need. We know that our, our kids don't need that thing that they saw in the supermarket. It won't do them any good. And we know that they don't need it even though they want it. And we don't give it to them. How many times when your kids were small did you take the box of matches away from them? Oh no, it was, the, it was the thing that they wanted most in the world. I need those box of matches if they could speak to you. But they went around coveting this box of matches but you as a responsible parent, you didn't give it to them. Why? Because despite the fact that it was a thing that they wanted, we knew it was a thing that they didn't need. Amen? And in our responsibility and our, 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 as parents, we didn't give them that knife that they wanted. Even though they wanted it, we knew that it was not going to benefit their life. So we didn't give it to them because it wasn't going to be good. And as a good parent, you wanted to protect your child. Amen? Now I wonder how things look from God's perspective. When we ask Him for the things that He knows that will be of no good to our lives and won't bless our lives. How does, how does God look at that? You see, because God wants to protect us too. That's God's nature. He wants to protect us. And He knows that if He gave us all the things that we were praying for, that He wouldn't be blessing us. And He wouldn't be protecting us. So we need to realize that despite how we may feel this, when we're disappointed and feel let down in our prayers, we need to realize that one of God's greatest gifts to you and to me is some of his unanswered prayers but jesus says in, in verse 33 he says but seek first the kingdom of god and, and his righteousness and all of these things will be added to you jesus said to put the kingdom of god first and all the things that we needed will be given to us and we talked about the kingdom of god a, a few weeks back in in one of our previous series and you can go back in, in, in our iTunes there and you can find it on our YouTube page you'll find that message and I would encourage you to listen to it the kingdom of God is where God's will reigns not mine, God's will and God said we're to seek first His will not your own will God's will will reign when we seek first the kingdom of God earlier in Matthew chapter 6 in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus told us to pray this way, He said in verse 10, He said we are to pray that your kingdom, God, your, not, not, not my kingdom, God says we are to pray, God, your kingdom come. And God, in that we are to pray, God, your will be done. And when we do that, we're, we're basically saying, God, I know I have a will. I know there's things that, that I want, but God, I'm praying that let it be according to your will, not be according to my will. You see, when Moses led the children of Israel out of their captivity in Egypt, and when they started their journey through the desert, it seemed like from day one they had serious challenges. And one of the biggest challenges that was there for such a large group was to provide enough food for them to eat. Now, I don't know about you, but me and my family, we always like to know in advance what's for dinner any given day. It'll be the main question that we'll ask. I mean, virtually every day, 
Rebecca will text me at some stage every day. Sometimes it's early in the morning, sometimes it's a little bit in the afternoon, but I can virtually set my clock to guarantee that Rebecca will text and say, what's for dinner today? We love to know what's for dinner today. But you see, in our house, thank God, there is never any lack of food. Our presses are always full of food. Our freezers, there's always food in our freezers. There's never any lack of food in our house. So the anxiety is not there to be worried about, if, is there going to be food at home? It's the question of, what's it going to be? But the children of Israel traveled through the desert. One of the biggest complaints they had of Moses was, Hey Moses, why did you bring us out of Egypt to starve here in the desert? I mean, back in, in Egypt, we had so many nice food. We had cucumbers, we had leeks, we had garlic, we had all of those nice stuff. We, we had meat for our pots. And, and you've, you've brought us out to the desert here to kill us. They reminisced on how great things were in, in Egypt. Exodus chapter 16 and verse 2 says, Then the whole congregation of the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron in, in the wilderness. And the children of Israel said to them, Oh, that we had died by the hands of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by pots full of meat and when we ate bread to the full. For you have brought us into this wilderness to kill us, this whole assembly, with hunger. Isn't it true sometimes that we would rather be well fed in prison than on a diet with freedom? Some of the most miserable people on the planet are constantly on a diet. You ever notice that? And the happiest people on the earth, I believe, are, are, are the ones who eat the cake and drink the Pepsi. Amen? Verse 11 says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, I have heard the complaints of the children of Israel. Speak to them, saying, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall be filled with bread. And you shall know that I am the Lord your God. And you know, time and time again, God provided for his people supernaturally in the desert. He never left them hungry. Even though they eventually started to complain about the manna. You can see that over there in Numbers chapter 11. He never left them thirsty either. God provided water for them out of a rock. And the Word of God tells us that God even made their clothes not to wear out on them. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Imagine if your clothes didn't wear out on you, if your shoes never wore out. Imagine, oh, and this would be a nightmare for, for most women here, and probably some of the men too, if you couldn't buy new clothes. If the clothes you were wearing today, you would wear in 40 years. Imagine if your clothes grew on you. <laughs> nightmare for some people, but that's how great God was. He provided clothes for the children of Israel that grew on them. They never wore out. They never got a hole in the knee. Their toe never popped out through their shoe. That's how much God provided for them. For the 40 years that they were in the desert, no one died of hunger. No one went to bed at night hungry or thirsty and needing of a drink. No one ever didn't have a roof over their head. No one was ever cold or, or were they ever too hot. God provided for their every need. That's the nature of the God we serve. One of the benefits that we as, as children of God have is that God provides every need that we have. And if God can provide for perhaps, I, I believe they say, 1.3 million Israelites in the middle of a desert. Amen. In the middle of a desert. If God can provide for all of those multitude of children of Israel for 40 years, He can surely provide for you and for me and our family's every need today. Psalms 37 in the English Standard Version says in verse 25, it says, I have been young and I'm now old, yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. God was literally 
providing bread from heaven. Enough every day. He flew in enough quail every day for these 1.3 million people every day for 40 years. But it wasn't good enough. Why? Because they had it in their own heads that they wanted God to provide for them in a different way. And how often do we do the same? We have a need and we pray. And we ask God to take care of the need. But here's the thing. We've already worked it out in our own mind how God is going to do it. Or is that just me? We've done it. We have a need of this. We have a need of that. And and we pray and we ask God. But even before we ask God for it, here's how you're going to do it, God. Here's how you're going to... I know. I have have it all. We have it all worked out in advance. We're kind of like, and if you've seen the film Shrek, remember when Shrek... He, he, he had to go and rescue the princess Fiona. I remember when he, 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 he uh, beat all the thorns and thistles away and when he eventually uh, got past the dragon and when he went to the room where, where Princess Fiona was and, uh, and she saw him coming or heard him coming and, and she set herself out properly and perfectly. Uh, and then when Shrek came in and, and she was there and she had her lips perked up for a kiss from Shrek and, and Shrek just came in and, and grabbed her up and said, come on. And Princess Fiona said, hey, hey, that's not the way to do it. And I think that's what we do with God a lot of times. We have this expectation in our own minds that God has to do a thing for us that we've asked Him to do a certain way. But, you know, here's what we need to remember. God's ways are not our ways. Amen? And He doesn't have to do it the way we believe He has to do it or think. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 18 says, In everything He says, Give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In everything, in every way that God moves in your life, in every circumstance, in every situation, in every lack, in every need, in every abundance, in every thing, the Word of God says we are to give thanks to God. We are to give thanks. Isaiah 55, and it says there in verse 8, it says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Remember when you said to your kids that they couldn't have a thing that they wanted and they just couldn't understand why we wouldn't give them that Stanley knife? But we knew better. We knew that even though they wanted it with all their heart, we knew that by withholding it from them, we were protecting them. I wonder how often has God protected us from our prayers? I think we've all prayed prayers that have gone unanswered. Prayers that have left us frustrated at God's lack of an answer. And maybe some of us would admit a little bit angry with God. Because he didn't give us that thing that we just had to have. But I wonder today and reflect, was that a blessing from God? The fact that God said no. Because he could see some of the things that we couldn't see. And his no was protecting us even from our own prayers. One final scripture today. Matthew chapter 7. It says there in verse 7. It says, Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receive. And the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, it will be opened. Or which of you, if your son asks him for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give to those who ask Him? God says ask. God said seek. God said knock. You know, God is not in the business of withholding. There are so many people out there who believe that their poverty is a result because God is honored in poverty. Let me dispel that myth straight away. God is not honored in poverty. Amen. God wants to bless you. God wants you to live in the abundant life 
that he sent his son Jesus to die to give you access to. So why would God want to give you uh, access to abundant life and then withhold it from you? God said he would never withhold any good thing from us. So I guess what I'm trying to say is today is God always provides for us. But just sometimes not the way we think he should. But we have to remember that God is a sovereign God. And he knows best. 